your local member of parliament just because I missed one meeting of the local party. Since you were elected, you've missed every meeting of the local party. In fact, we're thinking of running a spot the MP competition in the constituency <laughs> newsletter. Anybody who sees you in Holton Price wins a fiver. But there are more important things for an MP to do than go swanning around the constituency pressing the flesh. Agreed, and you don't do any of those things either. You never hold surgeries, you don't ask questions in the house, you throw away constituents' letters, and you take absolutely no interest in local industry. All right, I admit it, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I blame myself. Years ago, they offered us Leon Britton for our MP. I turned him down because he was Jewish. Now, after you, I wouldn't even demur if Central Office foisted a darky on us. <laughs> well, how do the other members of the Executive Council feel about me? Who cares? I'm the chairman. They do as I say. In that respect, it's a perfect miniature of Mrs. Thatcher's cabinet. <laughs> ah. Daddy, what a lovely surprise. Mwah. You stay to lunch? No, not hungry. Just chewed up and spat out your husband. <laughs> I'm leaving now, but it's him that's on his way out. Are you serious about sacking me? Oh, Daddy's always serious. Compared to him, P.W. Both is an old softy. <laughs> will you try and find another constituency? Or will you give up politics altogether and concentrate on being a full-time spiv? No, neither. I'll be all right. There's over a month before the next meeting of the Executive Council. That's time enough to enhance my reputation. Yes, but can one enhance what doesn't exist? <laughs> of course, darling. This is politics, not real life. <laughs> well, a few large donations to popular charities, some well-publicised appearances at local events. I'll soon be everyone's blue-eyed boy again. Not daddy's. I'll, uh, I'll need your help, though, darling. <laughs> The politician isn't dressed without a beautiful wife on his arm. We'll have to be seen at charity events, you know, visit geriatric wards and kiss babies. A nauseating prospect, but it goes down very well with the plant. But darling, I think you're forgetting something. Hmm? I loathe and despise you. <laughs> <laughs> Why should I help you? Well, because I'm the one who pays for all this sexy lingerie. Hmm, it is rather sexy, isn't it? Is it turning you on? Well... <laughs> As Kipling probably said, down in the jungle, something stirred. <laughs> well, darling, I'm sorry if I'm giving you a Rudyard on. But... <laughs> <laughs> Don't let's spoil a perfectly stable marriage by trying to reintroduce sex in it. <laughs> but I want to make a donation of £50,000. No, only if you make me the president. <laughs> well, because Save the Children is a charity very close to my heart. Yes, well, Princess Anne's had a good run. <laughs> anyway, she'll probably have to be chauffeuring Mark Phillips around after the trial. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, in that case, I shall direct my largesse elsewhere. Hello? Yes, you can help me. Yes, yes. I'm interested in becoming the, uh... The, the master of the corporation of Trinity House of Deptford Strond. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because I'm very interested in the welfare of lighthouse keepers. <laughs> no, I'm not interested in sailors in general, and I resent the implication. <laughs> the Duke of Edinburgh, my God, that family's got it sewn up, haven't they? <laughs> Sorry to bother you, sir. Yes. There's a lady outside, says she's got an appointment. Oh, really? Uh, what does she look like? Well, sir, I suppose you could say she's like something out of Dallas. Oh, what do you mean, uh, Sue Ellen? No, sir, I was thinking more J.R. <laughs> oh, God. Morning. Morning. <sighs> it's all right, officer. This is Norman, my accountant. <laughs> no. All right, make it snappy. I don't really want to be seen around the Palace of Westminster with a transvestite. Oh. So that's the thanks I get for saving your bacon. Eh? Hey? Have you heard of Lamberger Guzzler? Are you serious? Lamberger Guzzler is an American chain of fast food eateries. Their speciality is a 1.75 ounce lamb meat patty enhanced with nine secret spices and 14 chemical additives. Yum, yum. <laughs> so what? 
So they want to open 200 Lamberger Guzzler restaurants in Britain by the end of next year. Now that means they're going to build a huge factory in a sheep farming area. And as you know, Halton Price is a big sheep rearing district. Is it? <laughs> so all you have to do is make sure that the factory is built in Halton Price. They'll give you the keys to the city. But that's excellent, Norman. <laughs> Wait a minute, there must be dozens of places where they breed sheep, not including the cabinet. Why should they come to Halton Price? Wouldn't you like to know? Oh, God. You're not going to play hard to get, are you? I need £10,000, Alan, to pay for my sex change operation, and it isn't a health service cut. <laughs> All right, then. Why should... The Guzzler Corporation site their factory in Halton Price. Well, taking regional development allowances into account, the Guzzler Corporation would be tossing millions away if they built anywhere other than Halton Price. Really? That's excellent. Or Wales. Ah. Yeah, well, it should be simple for a man of your talents to put Wales out of the running. Yes, probably, but uh, I'm the chap with the chequebook, so you tell me how. <laughs> Willoughby Guzzler, father of the Lamberger, is a strict Christian fundamentalist and when I say strict, he would make Billy Graham look like Billy Connolly. <laughs> really, is he now? Well, then, I feel it is my moral duty to ensure that nice Christian Mr. Guzman <laughs> finds out that Garonwy Hopkins, the Secretary of State for Wales, is a notoriously randy Welsh ram. <laughs> You've read my mind. Norman, you are a genius. If I didn't know your little secret, I'd kiss you. <laughs> You haven't signed it. No, of course not. I haven't finished with you yet. What are you doing tonight, Chucky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Garonway Hopkins always had a weakness for the fillies. In fact, he was damned lucky his political career wasn't abruptly curtailed by a certain scandal back in the early 60s. Really? Oh. <laughs> Go on. Which scandal? Oh, quite a small one. After Vassal, before Profumo. Garonwe was a junior minister at the time. Yeah. He developed a passion for an exotic dancer called Hilda, who performed in a rather seedy nightclub. They arranged a rendezvous there one weekend. But on the Friday night, Garonwe developed a nasty cough, and his doctor ordered him to go to bed and suck a fisherman's friend. <laughs> so, so he asked a close colleague of his, another junior minister, to pop along to the nightclub in question and make his excuses to Hilda. <laughs> Unfortunately, a freelance photographer for the News of the World happened to be in the club at the time. Some photographs were published, and Garonwe's colleague was ruined, forced to resign from the government. And I've been on the back benches ever since. <laughs> Garonwe Hopkins, on the other hand, went on to gain all the glittering prizes. And there he is now, a thoroughly filthy fellow. Come on, Stephen, introduce me. Uh, Hopkins, good to see you. You're looking well. Baxter, good lord man. I thought they'd kicked you upstairs years ago. No, I'm still hanging on. On the back benches. Uh, this is a young protege of mine, Alan Bastard. Oh. How do you do, sir? This is indeed a great honour for me. You must allow me to buy you a drink. Allow you? Well, that's a little hardship. <laughs> Certainly, a pint of best bitter. A pint of best bitter it is. A pint of best bitter, please, and I'll have a large brandy. Uh, <coughs> I don't think they serve fishermen's friends, do they? <laughs> Oh, don't tempt me. The old heart's not where it used to be. I shouldn't really be drinking. Tell me, what's a young go-getter like you doing, sucking up to a, an old druid in the autumn of his political career? Hmm? <laughs> Just simply that I'm a lover of Wales. Well, that's kinky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and conservationist as well. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, look at the portfolio on that. <laughs> you can lean on my dispatch box in the <laughs> You're an admirer of the female form, aren't oh, you? Oh, you can say that, yes, yes. And yourself? Worshipper. Worshipper, boy. So where, where do you go to pick up the girlies? 
I, I used to go to Shepherd's Market. And that was before, you know, the bit of trouble with the, um, you know, rum dee dum dee dum dee dum rum <laughs> Well, in that case, you really must come down to my club. There are some very broad-minded hostesses there. <laughs> Evening. <laughs> now, go on, we I'm just going to pop to the gents and get a fistful of condoms. You make some. <laughs> Bottle of champagne, please. The real stuff, not the usual pear tracks. I'm back in a I don't like this. No, no, Norman. Ten thousand pounds. Join me in a glass of bubbly, my dear. Oh, Why, I hate drinking alone. <laughs> there you are. Bottoms up. <laughs> I don't uh, normally go into hotel rooms with strange men. Neither do I. <laughs> you really are the most extraordinary person, Norma. You combine a gorgeous feminine figure with a sharp, witty, dare I say, masculine mind. You Welsh flatterer, get on me. No, I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Ah. Ooh, the breasts are so firm. Well, they should be. I've only had them a few months. <laughs> what a sense of humor. <laughs> Don't. Please. Uh, no, come on. I know you girls. When you say no, you want us boys to try harder. No, I don't. <laughs> now, relax, my dear. I'm a man of the world. I doubt you've anything up there I haven't come across before. <laughs> you want a bet? <laughs> Save your flash bulbs, Alan. He's dead. Is he? God, you're right. Looks as if rigor mortis is set in already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what? What? <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Mr. Gosler, how do you do? I do just damn you, Mr. Weaston. <laughs> You mind if I call you Alan? Not at all. Please do, Willoughby. <laughs> well, this is one hell of a classy office building you got for yourself here, Al. Well, thank you, uh, Willoughby. Although it's not just an office block, it also happens to be Parliament. I know that, Al. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> As soon as you limeys hear a good old southern drawl, you think you're dealing with some old dumbass shit kicker. <laughs> now, let me remind you that I have in 10 short years been of the fifth largest fast food business in the U.S. of A. And I have come to this tiny spit of an island out of the goodness of my heart to bring my eateries to your shopping malls, if you got any. <laughs> Jobs to your unemployed young'uns and wholesome lamb burgers to feed your starving northerners. <laughs> yeah, well, so, uh, let's not you and me get off on the wrong cowboy boot. Absolutely, huh, Absolutely. son? Absolutely. Point taken. Ooh. <laughs> um, Mr. Gosler, did you by any chance receive the press cuttings about the poor Garonwe Hopkins that I sent you? Oh, yeah. Sure did. <laughs> Terrible witness. Government minister dying in such a undignified way. Yeah. Uh, 
But what can you expect? The Welsh are essentially a pagan race, only drawn to Christianity for the opportunity of a good sing-song. <laughs> Where's my God-fearing Yorkshire man? Yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 hold your sheep there, Al. Look, I, I just touched down. I'm still jet-lagging a little. Uh, why don't we have dinner together tomorrow night, and well, then we can talk turkey. I'd rather talk uh, Lamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yeehaw! <laughs> See it! <laughs> My, my little Edie, she's, she's real hot to meet you and your good lady. <laughs> lady? What, you mean my wife? You are married, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, uh, very happily. Great! Because <laughs> we're a family business. <laughs> As my little Edie always says, the family that stays together stays together. <laughs> we make lousy mottos, but great burgers. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'll just telephone my beloved and make sure she hasn't made any alternative arrangements for tomorrow night. <laughs> Hello, Norma. <laughs> Terrible stink about old Garonwe Hopkins, eh? Mm. Shouldn't think his local party were particularly pleased about him dying in the arms of a tart. Oh, the shaft of tart than your entire electorate. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, uh, you're still intent on sacking me? Certainly. I thought you'd invited me here to accept your resignation in person. I see. You're, you're quite immovable. As a constipated elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is... Uh, what would I do if I did have to resign? Well, I could make a suggestion, but you'd have to be double-jointed. <laughs> uh, thinking about sheep farming. Sheep? Yes, sheep. Little woolly beasts with trusting faces. <laughs> How about sheep? Been rearing the damn things for over 50 years, or what with prices plummeting and those damn froggy farmers hijacking our lorries? I don't know. Well, if you're thinking of selling up, I didn't say that. Oh, well, I'm just interested, you know. I don't mind paying a little over the market price for good sheep. How much <laughs> above the market price? <laughs> Stuck on this. <laughs> All the food for this outlet we have flown in from Virginia, but once we start expanding... You're going to need Yorkshire sheep. Oh, could be, Al, could be. <laughs> well, dig in, everybody. While wow, they're hot and greasy. Yes, indeed. For what we are about to receive, <laughs> may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Mmm. 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 It's very pleasant. Right, it should be. 100% farm-raised lamb. <laughs> what do you say, Norma? Oh, I just feel so overdressed. Oh, no way. I think you look cute. Mm -hmm. So it's actually 100% meat, is it? Well, it depends upon what you mean by meat. You see, we have a no-waste policy. Bones, brains, and balls. <laughs> Neck. <laughs> now very efficient. <laughs> so, Mr. Gusler, how many little lambs are you going to need to slaughter per annum in Britain? Well, no, that depends upon turnover. What do you say, Edie? Well, <laughs> we well, average six to seven carcasses a week per outlet at an average of 43 pounds of usable sheep product per carcass times 200 eateries. Well, that's nearly six million lamb burgers. Five million, seven hundred and fifty thousand, to be precise. Ooh-wee. Looks like both our gals got brains as well as bazookas. Thank you, Willoughby. Yes, I think we can both thank the Lord that we've been so lucky in our choice of helpmates. Uh, you know, in fact, I feel like getting down on my knees right now and giving thanks. 
Thank you, Lord. And you know, girls who are smart in the office are usually sweet in the sack. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, is that right, Eve? <laughs> well, I've never had any complaints, Willa, from you or anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Norma? Oh, well, well, Norma is a, a one-man woman. <laughs> in every imaginable way. Uh, you mean to say, Norma, that uh, you never screwed around? Well, that's a very personal question. Uh, how about you, big boy? Do you swing? Uh, well, I belong to a few golf clubs. <laughs> Your British sense of humor. Yeah. So sexy. <laughs> Say, why don't we all go on back to my hotel suite and party? I got a jacuzzi. I got a water bed. I got a stack of stag films I brought in from the States, huh? What do you say? Come on, honey, if we can just loosen your nuts, I bet you can really screw around. <laughs> I'm a married woman. Oh, I'm a married woman, too. I wouldn't dream of cheating on my willow. I always tell him when I'm about to swing with another guy. <laughs> yeah, and if I'm videoing it, she can hardly be accused of going behind my back. No <laughs> I, I suppose not. Mr. Guzzler, I really feel I must say that I've, I've become very shocked at the tone this conversation is beginning to take. I, I mean, Norma and I are, are, are devout and, and strict Christians, and the only sin we're interested in is the general synod of the Church of England. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You see, Evie and me, we was just tempting you like the Lamb of God was tempted in the desert. Amen. Lamb of God? He means Jesus. Who? Jesus. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me for the utter profanities I've just uttered, but, but we had to be sure. You see, just before he passed over, the late uh, Garon Wise Hopkins sent me a long letter saying as how I shouldn't cite my factory in Halton Price on account of the member of parliament being a real dirty dog. <laughs> Does this mean I get the factory? <laughs> we'll sign the papers in the morning. And before you know it, we'll be turning over the old sod. And I can't wait to see the old sod's face when I tell him. <laughs>